So here I'm back. Hi. All right. Um, so the gain of this transistor, it says 20 to 70. Now, that's not 20 to 70 amps or ohms or volts or anything else. It's like a gain factor. In other words, it will amplify, whatever you put in, it, it, it amplifies it, let's say, 20 or, or 70 times. Now, the reason it says 20 to 70 is that it's impossible for each transistor to be exactly the same. In other words, one transistor comes off the assembly line, it has a gain of 35. The next one has a gain of 55. The next one has a gain of 23 and a half, and so on. Wake up, Jeff. Um, <laughs> sorry, we'll take a break in a second. Uh, boy, I must, uh, I must not be too energetic this morning. <laughs> Say, okay, so, well, they come off the assembly line, man, they could have any kind of gain. You don't even know. Anyway, so, so they give you a range. This gain will have a gain, uh, uh, this transistor will have a gain of somewhere between 20 and 70. Well, here's the deal. When you substitute transistors, you can stay the same or go up in voltage. You can stay the same or go up in current, just like diodes, but you kind of have to match the gain as close as you can. But it doesn't really have to be all that close. We have generally about three categories of gains, low, medium, and high gain transistors. Low gain transistors have a gain of up to about 250 or so. This is somewhat arbitrary. 250 to 750 maybe is a medium. 750 and above would be a high gain transistor. Almost any low gain transistor will substitute for almost any other low gain transistor. Highs for highs, mediums for mediums, and so on, as long as the voltage and current is the same. So let's take a look at some of these transistors. Let's say that we have a bad 2N3055, 60 volt, 15 amp, low gain, right? We got a bad one, and we need to get a substitute. Look in your chart here on page R-7. Right underneath the 2N3055, find this 2N5881. Could I use that as a substitute? Yes. Absolutely. Look, I, uh, the, the I sub C, the collector current, 15 amps. Voltage, 60 volts. That's exactly the same. The, the current gain, the H sub FE, the beta, 20 to 100. Definitely, it's almost exactly the same transistor. How about the one right above it? How about that 2N6576? Why not? 2K to 20K. Look at the gain. Sure, the gain says 2K to 20K. That's 2,000 to 20,000. I'd say that that is definitely a high gain transistor. There's no question about that. Yeah, Claude. Uh, 2,000 to 20,000 what? A gain factor. It has a gain of 2,000. It has a gain of 15,000 or whatever. Right, so that's, that's what they... That's the, the unit they call it. Yeah, I, I guess so. You know, I don't, I don't know. It, they, just, they just say it has a gain of 50. You know, that's all. It's not really a unit. I guess that's the Elvis that we're looking for. Oh, yeah. It's a gain of, uh, you know, the gain is 20 to 70 Elvis. All right? So, um, I don't know. Anyway. All right, let's look at a few more. How about uh, under 15 amps, 80 volts, 2N5880? Could I use that one? Why not? Yeah, you can. Why not? Could I? 5880? Yeah. It's PNP. What does that mean, Hondo? I can't use it, right? Reverse polarity. Right. The polarity would be reversed. Right. Okay. So I can't use that one. But we can get pretty nuts here. Let's, let's go down uh, 15 amps, 350 volts. 2N6251? No problem. It's a low gain transistor, and it says 6 to 50, but that's still in the ballpark. That would work. It would be very expensive, but it would work. Let's go really nuts. 20 amps, 20 amps, uh, 450 volts. MJ13334, no problem. See, it's higher current, way higher voltage. The gain is 10 to 60. Okay? So that will work too. And so that's really all you have to look at. Now, to make your job easier, I've got these things. Substituting transistors. Very often you cannot find the exact right transistor. Now we'll be going over some suggested parts that you should get. And in the back of your blue book on page, you don't have to turn there, but on page 82 or 83, there's a list of recommended parts that I suggest that you get. 
But a lot of times uh, you'll need to get a, a transistor and you won't have the exact right part. I mean, we do use dozens and dozens of different kinds of transistors. And so you have this thing. Now, what ECG is, is a company that manufactures a line of universal replacement components. Not just transistors, but diodes and uh, integrated circuits and, and everything. Good move, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you very little. All right. Uh, so, so here's what this is. Um, in the back of the book is a list of all transistors and integrated circuits and diodes known to human science back here, just about. I mean, there's a, just a shitload of them back here. Uh, and it's in alphanumeric order. Let's say that we have a 2N3055 and it's bad. Let's look up 2N3055 in the back. And it's in alphanumeric order and it would be on page 2-28. Uh, and it's kind of in the second column over the fifth paragraph up, 2N3055. Everybody find that, 2-28. Two dash twenty-eight, like right around there somewhere. And it says that a two N three O five five is the same as an ECG what? ECG one thirty. Then all you have to do is pick up the phone and say, "Hey man, I need an ECG one thirty and the guy will say, "Hey, come on down and get it." Um, this makes your job a whole lot easier because we do use lots of strange transistors. Well, not lots of them. We use some weird transistors in our, in our industry. Um, and you may not be able to get the exact replacement. But most towns, I guess except Yuba City, have some kind of an ECG distributor. I mean, certainly there's a TV repair guy in every town. Where does he get his parts? A lot of them get them from the local ECG guy. Um, now, there's another really cool way to use this book. Let's say that you have a transistor laying around in the shop and you want to know what the specifications are. You want to know if you can use it as a substitute for something else. Let's say you have a 2N3055 laying around and you don't know what the hell the, the, the specifications are, which you wouldn't. And the, and the schematic doesn't tell you either. The schematic doesn't tell you specifications. It only tells you part numbers. So you look it up. You find that it's an ECG130. Then in the very front of the book is the product index. And let's look up the ECG 130, and it would be on page 1-9. Page 1-9. And it's in Now, this is just the index. This is telling you where to find the information. So if you look on page 1-9, left-hand column, right in the middle, ECG 130, and it says to turn to page 1-40 to find the info. So let's turn to page 1-40 now. It takes a little while to get used to how this book works, but once you do, it's a real, it's a real important book. Where did you find uh, in the index in the front? Yeah. ECG 130 on page 1-9. Oh no, page 1-9. Oh, okay. See ECG 130. Gotcha. Okay, page number 1-40. Gotcha. All right. So turn to page 1-40 now. And let's look up the ECG 130. And, and here it is, right in the middle of the page, and it says ECG 130. What does it say about it? Well, it says it's an NPN transistor. It says it's made out of silicon, which it is. Um, there's another type of uh, trans, uh, material called germanium that we don't really use anymore. It says that it's commonly used as an audio frequency power amplifier, which it is. It may not be used like that in, in our case, but that's what it's commonly used for. It's complementary to an ECG219. That means it's the same specs but opposite polarity. Now, let's see what the specifications are. Remember, we've got some different voltage ratings, but the only one we're interested in is the second column over, collector to emitter volts. Remember that? V sub CEO. Or as it says here, BV, breakdown voltage. Okay, what does it say about the voltage? 60. We know that's true. We just looked that up. In fact, I shouldn't have erased it, but it was up here, 60 volts. So that's cool. Maximum collector current, I sub C. That's true. That was the original specs. Now, look over here. Current gain, H sub FE. 
What's it say? 40. See, so it says 40 typical, right? Yeah. Well, what was the original gain? 20 to 70, right? 40 is right in the middle, so it's an average. So, so what they've done here is using the exact same criteria that I just outlined in my previous utterance before the break, that is the, the thing that I, the, you know, the, the substitution method that we just went over, they're doing the exact same thing here, aren't they? So this makes your job real easy. This is, this and your blue book are two very important things to have. 